Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending this session. I think it's going to be exciting. It's the first one. Um, so my name is Mzu. Um, you can attempt to pronounce my full name, but I'll leave you, uh, you know, the pain. Um, but yeah, Mzu, so I'm the VP of product for uh, Intersect for identity and authentication. Um, and we're here to present what we've done with Q2 over the last year. I think it's really exciting to protect your customers. And just to give you a quick overview of uh, Intersect, so we've, we've existed since 2010. Um, you know, it was interesting that Matt, uh, the CEO, uh, said that you need to be obsessed with the problem. And that's when we started to say, how do we solve the you know, account takeover or fraud in the digital platform? Increasing security, but at the same time balancing that with uh, you know, uh, great user experience, right? You don't want, to, you don't want the other one to uh, overtake uh, one, right? So we are actually protecting over 80 million customers globally. Uh, you've seen a lot of uh, logos up there that are quite familiar, and of course, one of them is Q2. And with Q2, we've got a great partnership where we've pre-integrated our authentication uh, as, uh, you know, as part of the solution to give your customers more uh, options when it comes to authentication. And you'll see the demo shortly. And I am actually with one of our um, partners, which is Forefront, right? So Danny is uh, uh, from Forefront. She's experienced uh, the integration and the deployment of our solution. So I'll hand over to Danny just to explain you know, what the expected behavior is for your customers and the improvements. All right, thank you, Mizzou. So my name is Danny Birch, and I am the e-services manager at Forefront Credit Union. We have just over 100,000 members that we serve throughout the state of Michigan, and we have just about 50,000 active online and mobile banking users. So my job is to oversee and improve that platform, and along with the help of my team, we offer support and education to the members and employees who use those services. We've been with Q2 since 2015. We actually just celebrated our eight-year anniversary a couple of weeks ago, and we launched Member Pass powered by Intersect with our call center authentication in 2021. So just to touch on why we chose Member Pass, um, as I said, we have over 50,000 active online and mobile banking users. They are logging in about 1.3 million times per month. So this averages to be about 28 logins per user per month, which means they're relying on that online and mobile banking every single day. It's imperative for us to keep their data and their information secure, but at the same time, it has to be seamless and it has to be convenient. With the uh, success and the great adoption that we have had with MemberPass powered by Intersect in our call center, it only made sense for us to venture with them on this project as well. Mm -hmm. So right now we're in the employee soft launch of this. Um, we are super excited though to roll it out to our membership here shortly. Excellent, thank you very much. So to Danny's point, so as, uh, if we can switch over to the demo. Um, screen. So to Danny's point, I mean, we've, as Intersect, we've pre-integrated the solution within Q2, and we work with partners like Bonify, right, which uh, has the member pass solution, which works on call center, and then they're branding the solution that we've integrated as part of Q2 as, as member pass. But, you know, from an FI perspective, you have the choice, of course, in terms of how you brand this, uh, whether you want to be, you know, your own branding. But I just wanted to show you, I've just clicked a log in here. We want to show you the experience of the user. So the first time the user interfaces with your online banking platform, <clears throat> once you know, you've taken our plugin, of course, they'll go through the process of uh, authenticating as per normal using a, uh, you know, the SAC code. As you can see, I'm waiting for it to arrive in my email. There it is, 3446, that's the six. I will authenticate as per normal and then I get into my profile. Now, the beauty about this is as soon as a customer lands on the home page, we will notice a few things, that this particular device that this user is using does have the capability to take on biometric authentication or this advanced authentication, and, but they haven't activated it. So we'll have a banner that says, hey, uh, Mr. Customer, uh, you seem to not have uh, uh, activated pass keys and app authentication, I'll explain what that is, click here, right? They can click. They can go to the uh, authentication settings, and there's lots of explanation here. There's a video, there's instructions on how they can actually do it. So I'm gonna start off with the demo of how I can register my device using pass keys. Quick one, pass keys is basically, you know, the ability for users to authenticate 
uh, or to protect their accounts using biometrics on a browser, right? Various ecosystem partners like Apple, Google, Windows, Microsoft, etc., and the browser companies came together and formed this alliance called FIDO, and it makes it easier for you to protect your customers using biometrics. So that's that in a short uh, uh, description. But now, as you can see here, this button that says you can register your device using Touch ID. If I was using Windows, it would have been Windows Hello or my iPhone or whatever it is. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to link this device from Zoo's Mac, right? Um, just make that caps lock, right? And once I do that, that's when the experience comes in, right? It reaches out to our server, we get back a URL, and we just notify the users to say, EDT Bank wants you to activate a passkey. Um, and click activate, right? You can change that verbiage according to what you want as an FI. Now, this is where the ecosystem play comes in, right? We go to Apple or Android or whomever, we say, hey, we want to register a passkey for this user. And then Apple's like, yeah, you comply as per the spec, intersect. We're going to notify the customer. And when the customer says yes, that's when they are prompted to use whatever biometric that they're using for that particular device, right? So now I present my biometrics because I'm using uh, you know, Touch ID here. I could be using you know, Iris or Face ID or whatever it is. Now, we've also built an experience where we say, hey, since you've linked this device, this is all appless, right? I don't need a mobile app. Um, so do you want to link your mobile device via QR code? I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Um, this is Mzu's iPhone 13. When I click next, I am presented with a QR code. And all I need to do as a consumer is to take my, my phone, open the camera app. As you can see, all of you, hello, you're on camera. And when I scan that, it then takes me, you know, it gives me a URL. It lands me on a page, on a browser, on my computer, on my mobile phone, right? And it's when I activate, it's the same verbiage, right? EDT Bank would like you to activate biometric. As soon as I do that, we communicate with Apple uh, or Android or Windows or whomever. We say, this user wants to activate this biometric. There we go, simple as that. I've now linked my devices. I've trusted my device without actually using a mobile app. Now let's go back to the login phase, right? Typically, the fraud attack vector here is that a fraud, uh, you know, a bad actor will call in and say, hey, Mzu, we're from EDT Bank. We have sent a SAC code to you. We've seen some activity on your account. Give it to us. In this case, this doesn't happen because when I log in on my profile, I am now presented with an option to use pass keys to log in. It's a simple process where it'll say, use your pass key to sign on this uh, uh, you know, uh, domain, right? It could be your domain as a bank. And when you click continue, now it's asking the user to present the biometric that they've registered against their profile. So I present it, we validate that, that biometric or the key to validate that biometric is stored on the device. So it's impossible to actually take it out or even retrieve it as, even as is interesting, right? So now you can see the login process, no longer have to go to the SAC code and enter it. Now, if I wanna do a transfer, which is a high risk transaction, I will be able to you know, be authenticated using this uh, authentication mechanism. So you can set a threshold to say anything above $100, we wanna step up. But the step up mechanism is not gonna be SAC code because my device is trusted. So as soon as I say, hey, please confirm, you know, I'm, I'm doing a transfer, you'll be shown a message as confirm a transfer or a wire or whatever, a P2P payment or whatever that high risk transaction you're using. When I click confirm, it's the same process that says, hey, present your biometrics, right? I do that uh, presentation and then I've completed that process. I see I've got five minutes, so I just wanna maybe rush through this, but let's say now I move in between devices. So I'm gonna detrust this device. So let's say Danny and I meet uh, you know, for, for, for coffee and I say, Danny, I wanna log in. I wanna do a transfer uh, you know, on your computer. Um, and when I click log in, we will notice that that device that is uh, Mzu is coming in from is actually not trusted against his profile, but he's linked his mobile phone. So what do we do? We display the QR code again. I use my camera, right, to scan that QR code. And as soon as I click on that link, it takes me on that page and says, click continue to log in, right? When I do that, now we're requesting that key that we've stored during the registration process. And then I'm able, uh, you know, to authenticate accordingly. 
and that completes that login process. So I didn't need an app. So I've just shown you the appless flow here. Now we're gonna go to, to the exciting part as well, right? So Q2, uh, since we've worked with Q2 for over uh, you know, a couple of years, uh, we were invited you know, uh, as part of the early adopters of the mobile SDK. Now this is where we can give you rich experience from a, uh, an authentication point of view. So we were, uh, we, we're the first vendor from an authentication perspective to actually integrate that. This is a demo app. It doesn't, it will not, the experience is not necessarily gonna be exactly this, but as you can see, I'm launching my Q2 app. Now, users, as we've seen, you know, some FIs have actually said, 60 to 70% of your uh, digital uh, users are actually mobile banking users. So this will help to protect those customers. So once I've downloaded my app, I don't need to log in, right? I could just scan that QR code, but because I've already logged in on a computer or another device that is already trusted. So I can go and say, I wanna scan this QR code. As Soon as I've scanned that QR code, that process is linking your mobile app to your profile. So what does this mean now? When I come back and authenticate, I'm gonna put my, my phone like this. I'm just gonna you know, clear my notifications there. But as you can see, let's say I'm sitting, I'm doing a transfer. What will happen now is that I am going to get a push notification to my mobile app because my mobile device has actually been trusted. As you can see, I get the notification and then it says, hey, Zoom, would you like to log in? Right? We're using strong device identification where we're using X549 certificate uh, to identify that device. And of course, you know, we can have cryptographic uh, signing where the private key attests that this is the same device that was signed, that was linked to Gason Zoo's profile. So once I click yes, I am able then to go in and authenticate. Simple process, no need to enter uh, a SAC code. I just get the notification and similarly, right? If I'm doing a high risk transaction, again, we'll do the same transfer uh, this time around. I could use the biometrics here, but I've chosen as a user to use my mobile app as my primary authenticator. I've got that choice. So once I do that, we will detect, the plugin will detect to say, oh, Mzu actually has a mobile app. This device is not trusted his computer, but he does have a mobile app that is trusted against his profile. So let's push a notification or an authentication message to his uh, uh, device and say, are you doing this transfer? Are you changing an address, right? Are you increasing your limit? Are you doing a P2P payment or a wire, or whatever, high risk transactions where I can get that push on my mobile app and then I can confirm. So I'm gonna confirm here. Of course, if someone is trying to log in, let's say I'll just do one last demo and let's say a fraudster has my username and password, right? And they've stolen it from the dark web. That is no longer gonna allow them to get into my profile because if they don't have the mobile app that is trusted against their profile, they cannot get in. I'll get a push notification that says, hey, are you trying to log in? I'm like, no, Sami, right? I click no, and then it'll notify us. We're like, we couldn't authenticate you. So that removes that attack vector that you know, bad actors have in terms of saying social engineering, phishing or phishing and all those different attack vectors. So I'm gonna hand over to Danny uh, just to maybe wrap it up from a, uh, what we see as going forward. Absolutely. So uh, as Mizzou said, that fraud is prevalent. We've got social engineering, we've got phishing, we've got vishing, and unfortunately our membership is certainly not immune to that. So we have to do something. The secure, ex secure access code or OTP of the past is just no longer enough. We're living in a time where nearly everybody has a smartphone. Um, being able to authenticate into their online banking or process those higher risk transactions with simple biometrics that they're already using, they've already got set up, mm -hmm. um, will not only keep their data and their accounts more secure, but it's gonna save them time. Those one-time passcodes, they take time to request, to type in, there's the potential to type them in incorrectly, and we all know that those result in calls or visits to the branch or the call center, which is not a good um, experience for the member. So membership expects fast, membership expects seamless, and we believe that with member pass powered by intersect we can achieve that awesome so i mean we got a lot of demos i didn't do uh you know the other demos like password reset or any other high risk transactions so please come to our booth and we'll show you more right thank you thank you so all right thank you all so much Next, we have up our friends from Fiserv, and I believe we got to get them plugged in real quick, and then they should be able to get going. 